Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey, joined with my son, Jordan Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our science tutorial videos. In today's video, we will explain how energy is transferred through food webs, food chains, and energy pyramids. So let's do this. Our learning target for today is, I can explain how energy is transferred through food chains, food webs, and energy pyramids. The laws of conservation of matter and energy state that matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed but can be changed or transformed from one form to another. With that being said, we often don't see these changes or transformations but trust and believe they're happening all around us all the time, day in and day out. In today's video, we will provide common relevant everyday examples of how matter and energy are transformed into food chains, food webs, and energy pyramids. So let's begin with food chains. Now before we dive into food chains, it is important to go over the difference between food webs and food chains. A food chain shows only one path for energy and matter to flow from producer organisms to consumers and then to decomposal organisms. A food web shows many paths for energy and matter to flow from producers to consumers and then decomposal organisms. Think of a food web as many different food chains combined together. Food chains combine into food webs because most organisms consume or eat more than one type of plant or animal. If you take a look at the following food chain, you will notice that the sun is the ultimate source of energy for this food chain like it is with all the other food chains and food webs. A food chain always starts off with the sun providing sunlight energy to the primary producer or plant along with carbon dioxide and water for it to grow. The arrows on the food chain and food web represent the direction in which energy is flowing from one organism to another. Also, as you go up the food chain, the next level of organisms only receive 10% of the stored energy from the organisms it ate or consumed. These organisms only receive 10% of the energy because most of it is lost in the form of heat as your body is used to perform specific processes in order to survive like cellular respiration, food digestion, waste removal, moving around, and several other functions that are necessary for the organism to survive. Now let's take a look at the following food chain. Primary producers contain 100% of the energy in the food chain. The primary producer is then eaten by the primary consumer, which is the grasshopper. The grasshopper now has received 10% of the energy from the grass. The grasshopper is then eaten by the secondary consumer, or frog, who receives 1% of the energy from the grasshopper. The frog is then eaten by the snake, or tertiary consumer, who receives 0.1% of the energy from the frog. The snake is then eaten by the top tertiary consumer, which is the hawk in this food chain. The hawk only receives 0.01% of the energy from the snake it ate. Notice how as we move up the food chain, matter and energy are being transferred from one organism to another. As we move up, more and more of the energy is being released from the organism into the environment due to heat coming from the organism to perform necessary bodily functions. This is why organisms must continue to eat in order to gain more energy to perform important bodily functions. Now let's take a look at food webs, which like we said earlier, are like a bunch of food chains combined together. Remember, most organisms don't eat just one type of food, so there are many ways energy can flow in a food web. Let's take a look at the following food web. If you notice, the producers are always at the bottom of a food web because they contain 100% of the energy. This makes sense because producers, or autotrophs, can make their own food and don't need to consume other organisms to get their energy. The carrots, grass, and grains are the key foundational pieces for this food web. They contain 100% of the energy. Without these primary producers, the rest of the food web would die off because primary producers are the starting point for all energy transfer for life on Earth. If we go to the next level up, the primary consumers, which are the rabbits, mice, grasshoppers, and birds, eat the producers and only receive 10% of the energy from the producers. As we move up to the top tertiary level with the foxes and owls, they only receive 1% of the energy from the consumers. We call the foxes and owls top tertiary consumers in this food web because arrows point to them, but no arrows points away from them. This basically means that they feed on other organisms for energy, but no other organism feeds on them for energy. Also, notice how there are several different ways for energy and matter to flow through this food web. Let's focus on the grasshopper as an example. In this food web, the grasshopper gains its energy by eating the grasses and grains. The owls and birds gain their energy by eating the grasshopper. If you notice, the owl can also gain energy by eating the mouse and the bird can also gain energy by eating the grains. As you can tell, there are multiple ways for consumers to gain energy in this food web. When you think about it, that's usually how it is for most consumers. So once again, a food chain only shows one path for energy to transfer, but a food web shows many different ways energy can be transferred from one organism to the next. 
Now let's talk about energy pyramids, which are also known as ecological pyramids. Energy pyramids are picture representations designed to show the biomass or amount of living organisms at each trophic level in a certain ecosystem. There are also great representations of how the amount of energy transfer gets smaller and smaller as you go up food chains and food webs. Let's look at this simplified energy pyramid. All of the energy from the pyramid starts off with the sun's energy that is transferred to the primary producer. The amount of energy transfer gets smaller and smaller as we move up the energy pyramid. And like we said before, which is pointed out on the right side of this diagram, most of the energy that is transferred is lost as heat for the organisms at each level to perform important functions to keep them alive. On the left side of the diagram, all the arrows point to decomposers. This makes perfect sense because eventually all organisms are going to die and their bodies will be broken down by decomposers who return the nutrients from these organisms' bodies back to the soil where primary producers will absorb these nutrients to help them grow and survive. It really is the cycle of life as famously stated in the movie The Lion King. Let's look at another example. Several questions can be asked about this diagram, so let's see if you know the answers. Which organism received the most amount of energy? Which organism received the least amount of energy? Which organisms have to consume other organisms in order to survive? Which organisms do not depend on other organisms in order for them to survive? Which organisms are herbivores? Which organisms are carnivores? What is being transferred as you move up the energy pyramid? Why do the percentage numbers get smaller as you move up the energy pyramid? What do you think would happen to the populations of all of the other organisms if you were to remove rabbits from these energy pyramids? What do all these organisms have in common? So many questions and we are confident that you have all the answers. And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with explaining how energy is transferred through food chains, food webs, and energy pyramids by taking our video quiz. You will show electronic devices to scan the QR code at the bottom right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you, you better, better keep, keep going because it's not over until you win. win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and also click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our awesome videos. Peace, and have a positive, productive day. That's the best you can do! <laughs> Got ass.